Hi there, this is Dr. Mark Weirman, and this is going to be a brief video about osteoblasts and osteoclasts with a couple uh, scenarios in there to reinforce the, uh, the ideas here. So osteoblasts. So osteoblasts, number one job is to build bone. That's what it's designed to do, build bone. So how does it do osteogenesis? So build bone. It is going to secrete this moldable substance called osteoblasts. Osteoid. So osteoid is kind of like wet cement, but at some point we need to harden this osteoid. So that way we're going to create awesome or great bone tissue. So what you need to add is you need to add calcium. So the process of adding calcium and hardening this tissue is called calcification. So calcification is adding calcium to that tissue. And what you're creating is you're creating hydroxyapatite from this osteoid. Now hydroxyapatite is about two thirds of this bone tissue and is considered the inorganic portion of this bone tissue. Now the organic side of this bone tissue is gonna be coming from collagen. So collagen is a fiber that's stronger than steel, and it accounts for about one-third of that bone tissue. So you have this collagen, it's kind of like the steel rebar in the concrete, or the collagen is these, these bendable but strong fibers in the hydroxyapatite. And that is how you create bone. So that's osteogenesis, creating bone. Now job number two for the osteoblast is it's going to secrete this key or this substance called rank L. Now this L stands for ligand, so it is going to be a key and it's looking for it, its receptor, its soulmate. And its soulmate, or the receptor, is hanging out on the cell membrane of these cells. And these cells are called osteoclast precursor cells. And so as the rankal key enters this receptor, these cells are going to get activated. They're going to meld together, about 40 to 50 of them, and then that's how you form osteoclasts. Now osteoclasts, their number one job is to crush the bone tissue. And they're going to do that by creating hydrochloric acid near the bone and they're going to crush the bone, but there's a better word for that. It's called osteolysis. So you're cutting the bone or crushing the bone. And through osteolysis you're going to be able to recapture the calcium from the bone and put it back into the blood. But one thing that's interesting is why in the world would this osteoblast, who's supposed to be building bone, be creating these keys to create osteoclasts? It's nemesis, or the opposite kind of bone cell. And it's all about checks and balances. Your body wants to maintain homeostasis. So when you're building bone, we have an innate uh, process to make sure we build osteoclasts to crush the bone. So that way we kind of maintain uh, the proper amount of building bone just right, just right. And there's actually another substance that's secreted from osteoblasts called osteoprotogerin. Now osteoprotogerin is just another form of checks and balances because it's going to block the wrinkle keys. So if I had more osteoprotogerin, I would actually have less wrinkle keys and I'd make less osteoclasts. So a couple scenarios that are going to help reinforce these, these ideas is this one. Well, here's the first one. Number one, why are middle school girls typically taller than middle school boys? And it comes down to this hormone called estrogen. Now, estrogen is the hormone that makes girls girls. And what estrogen does is it actually promotes the production of osteoprotogerin. So if I have more of these blockers of osteoprotogerin, I'm going to have less rankle keys available. So with less rankle keys, you change the balance between osteoblasts and osteoclasts and you decrease osteoclast formation, which means osteoblasts are going to win and you're going to build bone more. And that's why middle school girls 
build bone a little bit faster than the boys, and they get a little bit taller in general. But when the boys hit puberty, they start making more testosterone, and testosterone is very similar to estrogen, and you're going to build bone faster. And so the boys can catch up and actually uh, bypass uh, the girls. Another scenario is this one. We got Ethel over here. Now, Ethel uh, is postmenopausal. Postmenopausal, which means her estrogen levels have decreased. Now, with her estrogen levels decreased, we're going to have a decrease in OPG production. And with a decrease in OPG production, you're going to have more of these keys, more of these rankle keys. And if we have more rankle keys, we're going to create more osteoclasts than osteoblasts. So the osteoclasts are winning on this ratio, so you're going to crush the bone more. And this could lead to a condition called osteoporosis. And osteoporosis just means porous bone, decreased mineralization. And so the osteoporosis actually creates weaker bone, increased chance of fracture, uh, and some issues. So the treatment could be is we need the, the treatment needs to focus on stimulating osteoblasts somehow. So what Ethel can do is she can do weight bearing exercises. So if she does weight bearing exercises, the skeletal muscles are going to stimulate the osteoblasts to build more bone and offset this ratio and try to maintain healthier bones. Another thing Ethel could take is this hormone called calcitonin. Now calcitonin is a hormone that actually stimulates osteoblasts. So you're kind of offsetting this ratio and trying to get the osteoblasts to build more bone to make the bone stronger. So hopefully you enjoyed this uh, video and hopefully it helps you. Thank you very much.